Hi, I'm Steve and welcome to the Honda Hornet Cafe Racer build or as Diesel Monster suggested, the Dart, which isn't too bad. Keep your suggestions coming in for what I could call the bike build. I was calling it number 16, nobody guessed why. Basically, it's the 16th bike I've ever owned. Just as simple as that. On the paint colour, the brushed silver was the most popular by far and Rob Guttridge sent me the name of the bike that I'd actually found the tank from. We were both talking about the same one and I'll show some video of it now. And um, Obviously I don't want to rip that tank off completely but it's a good idea for a paint scheme. As usual most people are watching and not subscribing so please like, subscribe, share, press the bell thing. Should subscribe down below or in the corner of the video, it doesn't cost anything and it just helps the channel. This time I'll be taking the engine out from the bike and also moving the rear shock mount which will look at some of the height issues. I'd always intended to do this once the engine was out and it has been flagged up by a couple of people so we will continue with that. So in future any videos that are 10 minutes or longer I'm going to split them over two videos but I'll still put them on in one week so you will get a video on the Wednesday and then another video on Sunday so you'll still get the same amount of content but I noticed that when the videos are 10 minutes over 10 minutes people just lose interest because we've all got the attention spans of oh look at that so anyway so without any more waffle let's get on with taking out the engine Okay, the engine's out pretty straightforward. The uh, swinging arm pivot came out, most of the bolts came out, apart from where someone had added crash bungs, crash bobbins. They hadn't put any, uh, they hadn't put any copper slip on or anything, and I think they'd over tightened all the stuff, probably worried that it they didn't snap, but they'd corroded into the aluminium washers and the rust and the bolts were rusted solid. So I had to cut them off. I wasn't bothered about them and I would have had to get new bolts to replace them afterwards anyway. Both the same, as you can see, absolutely solid. I filmed the um, time lapse a little bit too far apart, but it did come apart that easily. To lift it up on the paddock stand, put some blocks under the engine, get that level, take the paddock stand out so then I can remove the swinging arm if I needed to, get the chain off, then once the engine was out onto the wooden blocks, put the paddock stand in, lift it back clear, lift the front clear, which seemed to work quite well, the engine come out. But the biggest hassle was earlier on when I was working outside, when we had like a couple of hours of nice weather. It is now stopped raining, but it's been snowing for the last couple of days and it is absolutely freezing. I thought it was cold before. So I've treated myself to a new Dickies work shirt from Screwfix, um, 30 quid from Screwfix. If you uh, are going to get one, um, they're pretty much cheaper than the cheapest place you can find them. Um, but this is only a medium. I've got it, a jumper under it and I'm fat as as well from being in lockdown for so long. But this is a medium, so you probably buy a size smaller than you normally buy. Yeah, the biggest hassle was the exhaust manifold bolts. Since I bought the bike, I've been spraying them with WD-40 every time I think of it. So for quite a long time now, a couple of months, two or three months I've been getting sprayed. I got one out, no problem. Then I got one that sheared, yeah, not unexpected. So I warmed up, I spent literally three hours warming, cooling, trying to do the little tighten thing, then slackening, WD-40. Anyway, the six bolts that hold the manifold in, and five of them have snapped so i've got the broken studs to 
remove later. I've got that to look forward to. But when you see the front of the engine, the I thought the exhaust looked pretty good and I was all prepared to just clean it up and put a new end on. And the plates, the clamps that hold the manifold to the engine have corroded away like you wouldn't believe. It's obviously never ever been off. Someone's cleaned it up to that point. But the front of the frame where the there's like a support bar across, that is corroded away. I'm gonna have to uh, replace that, I think before it goes for powder coating. A couple of people on the photo said that the bike looked high at the rear end. Now, it was on a paddock stand and it was a bad photograph, bad angle, is the way I panned round. But I have been thinking the same thing myself from the start and I've always thought, right, I'll get the engine out, get the frame ready and then I'll look at that. So my idea was, after reading on the internet about someone else who did a Hornet, that I was going to put a slightly shorter shock in. The shock needs replacing anyway, so I thought I'll buy a slightly shorter one spoke to Hagen and to get a slightly shorter spot to get a sh to get a slightly shorter that's it to get a slightly shorter shock which is classed as a modified shock it was going to be an extra um, 90 quid and I didn't really want to spend 400 pound on a shock when the bike cost just over 800 I've been looking at clean second hand ones but that means going for standard rear shock so I'd got the tank as low as, it, as I could. On, for that tank, on that frame, I'd got it as low as I could. And then to keep the line, the seat was in the same place. So I couldn't really move that. So that left one option, and that is to grind off the rear shock mount and move it, move it up a little bit. So this morning I've been doing that. I, can't, I couldn't film grinding off the shock mount. I was just in front of the camera. It was getting in the way. Right, that is the bike stood up straight in place um, spirit level and that is absolutely bang on level and that's uh, lowered it down a little bit so I've spent all morning working out the the rake um, and the difference that I'm going to drop that shock is 10 millimeters that's it literally the thickness of the bolt that holds the shock that's all it needs dropping there was no way i could have just re-drilled it i thought about welding plates on the side and then and i thought you know i'll just cut the rear mount off and move it to where i want it 10 millimeters alters the rake by two degrees the bmw s thousand rr is 23 and a half but that would have a steering damper on it and everything and that's a short that's quite a, a steep rake and people in the past have reported that the the Hornet is a little bit twitchy anyway on the front end so that two degrees will just help that as well there's the rear shock mount just ground that off um, and I will re-weld all that so that was there and now you can see why I want to do it with the engine out that is 10 millimeters that's 25 millimeters that is 35 millimeters. Well, a little more if you like that sort of thing. But the shock's really stiff at that. It's fine. It's working out the front. It's more like uh, a crude. From there to there, it's 15, and that's just too much. It's more about seven, seven to ten. I'll measure it exactly in a minute. see by the brick line a little bit so eight millimeters on the height of the from the shock that should help that some of that twitchiness people have reported it's also going to get rid of that horrible bit of bracket which I didn't know what to do so by the time I cleaned that up that will look a lot cleaner there right that's it for this week I was hoping to get a bit more done but the exhaust manifold bolts just 
took loads of time and then fiddling about getting the rear shock height right. So next time I'll be cutting off any brackets that aren't required, I'll be welding in the seat pan, I'll be welding in the new bar on the front and getting the frame ready for powder coating. Also I might strip the forks down, I think they're going to be powder coated so I'll get them off ready for powder coating and the swinging arm which is also going to be powder coated. So as I said earlier, videos over 10 minutes, I'm going to split them up so you'll get two videos a week, one on a Wednesday, one on a Sunday. We'll see how that works and I will see you next Wednesday.